and again have no issue at all. My computer now is a, is a family PC which everybody uses. So apart from a couple of searches for Tree Food Tom or a couple of uh, children's programs for that the kids are playing on the websites for, that's really the limit of the um, of the searches that are done on this machine. Um, and I must say, Ubuntu 12.04 especially is an absolutely fantastic family orientated uh, operating system. It's so simple to use, and it's something that the uh, even the, my younger kids can can get on with. Mm-hmm. Um, is this really simple and say something like? PD-based distribution, such as Madriva. It's it's so the the interface is so clean. There's there's nothing. All all the buttons that are clickable for young fingers and on keyboards and uh, are all tucked out of the way with the uh, with a little uh, with the launcher that pops out when you go to the side of the screen, which I now find very intuitive. And when I'm at work, unfortunately at work they still use uh, XP, mm-hmm. and I find myself drifting to the side of the screen with the mouse pointer to try and pull up the uh, launcher. So. It is quite intuitive. It's not at first because it was something different, but now I'm actually very, very used to it. I find it's it's fantastic, mm. um, and especially because I just don't have the time. I'd love to be able to you know, custom build a distro and you know modify everything, but I just don't have the time these days. So I need it to be working and working now. And Ubuntu, um, and I'm sure there's plenty of other distributions just the same, but Ubuntu maybe out of laziness on my behalf. I knew it was a system I've used before. Knew it was solid, large community, a lot of help there if you require it. So for me, it was ideal, and it's, it hasn't let me down yet. So, uh, very, use, very... I'm not sure I've told you. I did use Unity for a while, but I used it in a very old... I think it's the previous old years. Was it actually available in 10.04? I don't know. I'll stop my head. No, 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 definitely not. Since... Only. I haven't used Ubuntu since 8, 8.04, the last LTS. Yeah, that was the last LTS I used. 2011 8. was the first year when it came out. I did, I did use it for a while, and I didn't find it so... Easy to use uh, after a few hours, <laughs> but I, I do find that more and more people in diaspora join diaspora. Mm. They uh, they do say they like it. Yeah, and interesting. Yeah. You know. I mean, it, it's probably like anything. Once you get used to the, the, the new layout, it becomes uh, second nature. But I, I do get on very well with this, and I'm even starting, which is something I never did before, using hotkeys, and that was that was something I never did before. And uh, I don't know whether I've been to. Uh, subconsciously encourages that, or it's just something that I've decided to do. But it's uh, no, it, it's it a is. very nice thing though. It saves you a lot of time. Though. Yeah, I've okay. had the same hotkeys for like ten years. I use uh, X bind keys to do that. So GIMP is Control Alt G, and it's uh, it's an instinct I've had since I was like nineteen years, uh, and it's it's been staying the same. I I feel bad when I see people like going to the menu and clicking, pulling things out because it's just such a waste of effort. You know, if you think you want to launch a program, you just move your fingers. That's it. It's up there. Um, but it the takes other, a certain learning curve. You know, people don't think they need that. Yeah, I mean, it, the things like yeah, the, um, the you're closing your windows on the other side of the um, on the other side of the windows pane is, is different to, uh, to what I was used to as well. Mm-hmm. But again, that was just something I, I picked up and got, and got used to. And, uh, yeah. you know, it is, it's very good. Mind you, it's, it's strange because um, now, for some reason, I'm not quite sure what, why it's done this, but I used to facilitate the multiple desktops uh, quite often and have something going. Now, by the way, that's Ubuntu structured where I can minimize things onto the launcher and have them mm-hmm. at a moment's notice. I don't bother with the, uh, the multiple desktops anymore. Mm-hmm. So um, There's also uh, activities in KDE. Which I might yeah. mention, uh, Linus Torvalds, I think he's gone back to it. And he's experimented with it. He's happy with it. So I suppose he stays with it, but it's not completely clear. If he, but he, he seems to have come back to it after not quite liking the interface. He got a bit of a shock when he saw 4.0 and it was full of bugs at the time. So you know, he's back to it. I mean, the, the only other thing I'd mention about Bunting, because this is probably a subject that he sticks to the seat of because it was reviewed at the time. But the only other thing that I would say that I've always found with um, Canonical's Ubuntu is the integration of the taskbar of different apps so that I'm, my email notifications, uh, everything goes into, even my, my Twitter Identica, uh, all that goes oh, on that's there. one of the things that was horrible to me when I used uh, Unity. I could barely tell the difference between running programs and all those that are minimized. It just reminds me of like using the Android 4.0 where you know the applications are being treated as though they're still available, but they actually say state, and some of them are actually active state. So you, you don't exactly know what's an active process, what's not an active process. And the thing about the Unity interface, it very much confused me. Like there was no compartment, like 
compartmentalization of, you know, where is my existing processes, my shortcuts, my menus, and it's just this this big menu, and it took me a while to figure it out, you know, a few hours, and I suppose I could get used to it. And maybe the new versions are going to feel much better, so it would be it would be premature of me to judge that based on the first release of, of Unity. You know. But next subject, we've got quite a few things that we can cover, and really quite support for choice. And uh, so, since I'm back and you've been at this uh, while I've been away. I'll let you choose the next topic. I know we discussed a few sure. things. Yeah, so. well, uh, I'm trying to pick things that have been in the news, I think, for a few weeks. The Ubuntu store has been a very major thing, and, and obviously a lot of people are using the distribution, so they seem to care quite a bit about the uh, direction of the, the, the distro is taking. You know, many of their friends who are using Linux are just, you know, straight away going to Ubuntu. So Vista 8 has been released, and it's a yes. mistake. I call it Vista 8. And uh, here I've been reading many bad things about it which I'm very happy about. So this time the AstroTurf campaign of Microsoft, which by the way is confirmed that Microsoft has been faking hype and has been doing all kinds of campaigns and doing the usual things like buying people. That's not exactly working out because, you know, there's, there's too much truth coming out. It's like all these journalists are doing like, you know, doing their proper job and Microsoft doesn't know what to do about it, you know. Who do they bribe next, you know. They have an allocation of uh, reportedly $1.5 billion dollars all this, you know, all this crap on TV that you see, all this Windows 8 stuff. Um, but it doesn't seem like the, the word is coming out. And in the first week, I think the number of sales of Vista 8 was only 4 million. Yeah, first week surprised... is really terrible. Well, what, what surprised me most about this whole campaign around uh, around the surface and everything like that was the, the lack of free hype to it. Now, not just from the, and I, I keep using this, and I I hope I don't cause offence with people. When I say average consumer, I would mean by that the people that aren't interested in computing per se, they use it as a tool to do whatever tasks they require, the sending of the email, the accessing social networking, but they don't really have any any interest in the technology itself. They just uh, buy a computer or laptop or netbook, whatever, to do a certain task. And there was no hype, uh, no excitement. I mean, as much as I'm loath to say it, when you have an Apple product that's due out, it's only got to be mentioned, and then the hype starts, and it continues to go on unabated until the thing gets it's released. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit artificial, you know. Even the it, it may well be, but whatever. Even if it's artificial, we never even got the artificial free hype beforehand. It seems that the only people talking about the the surface, for example, were the dedicated tech sites. There was a couple of mentions of BBC Click, but there certainly wasn't this sort of mainstream hype that we see. Oh, the BBC was completely selling out. I think a quarter of their articles were about. I, I, ne- it was I ne- very bleak. It was very, very bleak. I, I, ne- I never caught many much of that at all, and certainly from the people I spoke with, whether the Apple hype is fake or not, the average consumer you speak to them in the street or my yeah. circle of friends, oh. they know about the new Apple product coming. Have you seen the new iPhone 27 or something? They'll know about it coming. So. This wasn't. This was very absent, suspiciously absent from the surface. And uh, the launch night, I did intend to keep track on that as it as it occurred, hot off the press, as it were. And it seemed immediately that there wasn't going to be this queuing out the doors and the mass hysteria, whether rigged or not. And there's an article recently. In fact, I think it just came out today from uh, the old Mr. Balmer, and um, he's been standing behind his product. Uh, I wish I could find it and spin it now. Actually, Bill Gates has been pulled as a PR person as well for this this release, which I suppose he quite often is, but I think this time more than before. And uh, I oh, and I should mention here in the UK, one of the funny things was the fake hype was they sell the they said that the surface uh, had sold out. Now, of course, what they didn't tell you is how many units they had. Because, of course, Nokia also told that the Lumia phones have sold out. Mm. But later you saw the numbers, like, oh, that's quite a well, funny one. <laughs> Let's make 100 available, you know, if it's uh, as though it's the next Keen or something. <laughs> that, was, that was it. it was, um, there was another problem I was reading about as well with the office. So was, um, I think the quote was, and I could, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but it was something like the software makes, no, the hardware makes promises the software can't deliver, I think was yeah. the... Uh, yeah. um, uh, it works that effect anyway, and uh, I think somebody was talking about the lag and the uh, catching up of Microsoft Office uh, mm-hmm. when you were typing on, with the Surface, mm-hmm. which isn't very good considering that the Office side of things and is probably one of the selling points. Exactly, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, I've, um, I've been, and I found the article. I've, I've actually got the article now. Hopefully, is it IDG Infoworld? 
No, this is PC World. Uh, uh, it's the same one, IDG. It's probably the same article I'm thinking about. But they say that as an office uh, office oriented machine, it's a very poor one to do the 